Just a good old boy. <laughs> All right, so we've been doing this since the fall of 1978, which was 25 years ago, and the first time the cast got together. November 7th. November 7th, wow. 1978, the Holiday Inn, uh, to read the first episode, One Armed Bandits. In Atlanta. Yes. No, in Conyers, Georgia. Conyers, Georgia. Con right. Exit, the old exit 41, in fact, uh, the Holiday Inn. Off the uh, I-95. Uh, no, off of I-20. Don't fight. Say, oh. boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a historian. <laughs> but anyhow, and I'm sitting there thinking, we're reading this, and I'm just looking around, and there's, you know, I'm thinking, that's pretty good. You know, there's Jimmy Best and Sorrel Book and Denver Pyle, who are the, you know, all great. Classic actors. Classic yep. experience, bringing all that experience. You've Sonny got, Schroyer. You've got, well, me and Sonny, who were, you know, they found us in the swamp down there. The and same swamp. Sort of like Rick. Rick, the Rick like, <laughs> we was raised by wolves. <laughs> and uh, Was I there? You came in, you came in the next week. <laughs> To do uh, uh, repo. Searle and Denver and I arrived about the same time. We got John Schneider. We got Kathy Bach. We got Searle Book. We got Denver. Ba and I said, <laughs> holy mackerel. I said, you know how this is going to be? Sonny Schroyer. <laughs> I got the Germans here today. <laughs> when I first auditioned, uh, like, I, I was doing Hooper with Burt Reynolds, and they called me over and said, do you want to do a series? Would you like to go over and see about a series called Dukes of Hazard?" I said, I don't want to do a gang thing. <laughs> and they said, no, this is a good old boy thing. And I produced a picture for Bert, uh, which Sonny is in it, by the way, in, uh, down in, in Georgia, Conyers, Georgia. They said, we're going to shoot the whole thing down in Conyers, Georgia. I said, are you kidding? I said, if they'll shoot it down there, you know, I would do Gene Autry and who doo doo in the saddlebag. You know, I don't care. <laughs> it was also, you know, a lot of people forget it was a 9 o'clock show. So it was a little rougher a around risque. the edges. A little risque. Especially then, what they said about you two. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, that You're was, the oldest I what in Hazard County? <laughs> oldest virgin in Hazard County? Oh, okay. I remember. I don't know what that means. Rod Amato, Rod Amato <laughs> says, uh, says, Enos, I want you to look at Daisy's legs right here. Her legs are right here. And I said, Rod. I said, I, I need Daisy's legs right here. I don't, I don't need your. So me being the handle. accommodating actress that I am. Yeah, you came in and, and, and showed your leg and. Uh, For twelve hours. <laughs> I, I, I looked like I looked like an idiot studying a pimple or something. You know? Was that a character part? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I was in character. Anyway, uh, anyway, he was right. He was right. I mean, I thought I would be inspired by your legs, your three million dollar legs, and I was inspired, but but I was a poor actor. I, I kept looking at one little spot. I should have, uh, you know, took it all in. <laughs> <laughs> wow. To me, yeah. you know, Sonny, for 25 yeah. years I've wondered about you, and I, <laughs> I still don't quite. I just don't get it. <laughs> Since we're all together, I'd like to ask this cast one thing. Mm. Seven years. All of you had girlfriends and boyfriends and everything. And poor Roscoe, I was stuck with a hog and a dog. <laughs> right. There was an episode called Mrs. Roscoe P. Coltrane. Yeah, but she, she was, was a crook. A she was a, well, yeah, I'm, <laughs> so are you. <laughs> yes, there you go. Well, no, John. I'm, I'm, I'm a heart of gold. <laughs> yeah, I was a 12 year old who liked hot pursuit. <laughs> okay. I all finally right. got to see the front end of the General Lee. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Sitting right down there. that bar in the front. You didn't know that, did you? No, I did not know that. <laughs> I like the rubber doll. What? What? <laughs> what did he say? Oh, I, I know, know the blow up Daisy Duke doll. Yeah, I yeah. like that. <laughs> that, that. Yeah, was there a blow up Daisy Duke yes, doll? Yes, remember in the jail? It, it was I was in, in jail, jail and then yeah. we oh, 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 oh. put the, the fake Daisy in there. She put the the rubber doll in there, and I thought it was her until I picked her up. And uh, it was, you know, it was nice that I could control Daisy for a for a little while. Until she deflated? Yeah. <laughs> and Sonny still has that doll. Does <laughs> <laughs> well, Kathy, Kathy, remember the beautiful profile that I had taken of myself and put in the hat for the makeup man? No, I was so <laughs> freaked out working with everybody in the beginning, and Jimmy knew just how to get me. He, the, I think it was my first Are you going to tell us? Gonna, okay. Did, why, you know about this? I know oh, about it. You <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell it, but I'm surprised that you're going to tell it. Jimmy, what? You I'm like not surprised that you would bring it up, pardon the pun. But well, I, 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 I was the one who brought it up. 
Were you really naked? He was so <laughs> naked. No, he had his gun belt on. Didn't you have your gun belt and he your had hat? He his gun belt and his hat on. Let me tell you. Oh, and his cowboy boots. Does that count? <laughs> now, they could bleep this out. The makeup man used to hold the hat like this and make up your eyes. Well, of course, we're jerking our head around, talking to people, and they said, would you hold still, would you hold still? Finally put a Playboy magazine centerfold in the center of the hat. Well, that got my attention, <laughs> and I thought, well, but poor Kathy, what about poor Kathy? She had nothing to look at. Yes. So <laughs> I went home, me. took a Polaroid shot of myself with my hat, my cowboy boots on, and they put it in the hat. Now, you fade out the next morning. I forgot all about it. We're out there. I hear Kathy scream. I'm not aware it was a good scream or a bad scream. <laughs> was it a good scream? It was. I about fainted. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm well, not going to explain that it anymore. It <laughs> <laughs> so, I dare say. Sorrel Book had had a career as, you know, Yale School of Drama, yes. brilliant actor, Shakespeare, Broadway. Right. Career, we fixed that. But he had more fun <laughs> doing Boss Hogg. Oh, I know. And, and 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 brought more joy, but you know, with Sorrel, made would, more money. When, when he would go out and do personal appearances, <laughs> he was Boss Hog. Yeah, I mean, he he didn't go as Sorrel Book. He went as Boss Hog, and he put the costume on at nine o'clock in the morning, and maybe see thousands of people, and never get the slightest. Not only not get out of character, but be working improvisationally right. the whole time in character. And uh, he, he, he went it. out just about every weekend. The guy worked seven days a week. Well, I remember one of the first times I ever rehearsed with Boss, like you were saying, before the scene. It was when uh, Andy, Andrew Johnson was on the show playing the bad guy, the guy from uh, Dirty Harry. So I sat down in the chair and they started, uh, started running their lines in Japanese. Because <laughs> oh Boss was a oh, brilliant That's man. Right. He spoke six I languages. remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant, brilliant man. And, and Andy had, uh, had also knew Japanese, so they started running the scene in Japanese. And whenever my part came, they'd just stop and look at me. I'd throw the line in English. You know, Denver, Denver Pyle was a, uh, a sort of a, he was like an anchor. You know, I mean, that guy was so solid and so consistent, so experienced. Uh, and he was, you know, the, he was order. You know, Boss Hog and Brasco were the law, which, which in Hazard County was, you know, what it was. It, it, but. Denver Powell, as Uncle Jesse, was order. He was tradition. Yep. And, he was uh, family. And he family. taught, I think, not just the Dukes and the rest of us around there, but generations of kids how to behave. Right yep. from wrong, good from bad, a real moral authority. It was a great way to be able to, to, uh, to help raise your kids. And yeah, there was the driving and all that sort of things. But I've had so many people now over the years come back and say that they are they were so thankful to have a safe place to go on Friday night that actually helped them with their kids on Saturday morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. The things that I've done been involved in since it never ceases to amaze me how people just don't know how to deal with cars and cameras, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you spoiled us. I mean when I when I look at the show or I do something else and I think, you know, gone are the days of the beautiful fallen oak tree and the water with the ducks on it and the general I mean it's just so so beautiful. Remember those great shots? We'd have the, the trees down and there'd be, number one, where the, the ducks were on the lake and then all of a sudden the General Lee comes Lake. flying over and the ducks are, ducks are just getting out of the way. And... <laughs> there was one essential element to the Dukes of Hazard that people often overlook because, uh, you know, Roscoe and Boss and then you and the, not just the camaraderie. Yeah. <laughs> not just the camaraderie. No. No. More than that. <laughs> now, I'm talking about Paul Baxley. Yes. And Paul Baxley and his guys created the tone of this show, the pace of this show, the spirit of this show. They did it down in Georgia. And by the time we came out of there, there was an extraordinary thing happening. He took the chemistry of the cast yeah. and the fun of the idea and made it, brought it to life. Him and those stunt guys, Gary and Craig and Junior and Henry and Bob Orison, mm -hmm. uh, deserve credit. Oh, absolutely. For making us look absolutely. good week after week, and, and to me it was yeah. his show. Yeehaw. They were fabulous. These guys did more stunts before lunch than most people do in a week. And there was a shot where the, the General Lee was driving through a ravine somewhere, and the two police cars came up and jumped on either side of the creek and then oh. hit, boom, oh, yeah. and, and then spun and then landed. Yes. And the General Lee, boom, right yeah. there. Yes. You that was Bring in specialists for that. I love Georgia. I thought I it was just Georgia. Georgia was great. Georgia's a beautiful state. Didn't have to build anything, do anything. 
jump the car through a barn, they'd say, go ahead. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to tear it down anyway. Yeah. Help us out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No Never, and all the people come out and help you know, like out here, you know, you got to pay them 50 million bucks to turn around. <laughs> there we drive the horses, the cattle, the cows, yeah. everything. It was just absolutely. <laughs> Jimmy and I were in the police car and it flipped over, right? And suddenly, and the car is still smoking and Gary jumped out and everything. And I look around and here comes Jimmy Bass toward, the, I thought, oh, I said, Jimmy, are you going to do this? And he said, yeah. I said, Oh my God! And I turned to Paul and I said, "It's still smoking. <laughs> it could catch fire." And he and you said, "Peg, we only had enough gas in to flip it over like a half a cup. <laughs> it's not good." I said, "Oh God!" <laughs> and then you said, "Baby, you can do it." <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You did Anybody it. calls me baby. <laughs> Hi, Paul. No, oh, listen, she didn't back away <laughs> from anything. We did it. And Paul had so much fun doing close ups, if any of you recall. Not to no. me, he never okay, did. Well, then let me just tell you yeah. Not to you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd get it ready, and he'd tell me not to frown for the hour before, and don't squint your eyes. That's not a pretty thing when you squint your eyes, and don't wrinkle anything, and suck it up, honey, and it's going to be great. And just think beautiful thoughts, and I'm like, okay. So he had me running into the shot, and pivoting, and turning, and my hair swirling, and... You did great hair. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, Paul did great hair. <laughs> do that thing, do that. And he had me choreograph it. Paul, how do I do it? Oh, come on. <laughs> there it was. There it was. There it was. Sort of. Sort of had it there. And then Paul, I said, okay, Paul. I, he goes, are you ready, baby? And I there said, you okay. Go, I see? said, I'm ready. And I didn't frown for the hour, and I didn't think bad thoughts for an hour, and I wasn't mad for an hour. And I, and I got up there and I twisted and I turned and I did what he said and sat on the General Lee. And then I looked out and the whole set had their eyes averted. I went, this is a first. I must have been really bad. This is incredible. So I looked at Paul. I saw him behind the camera and his eyes were down. I went, oh my God, I guess I really embarrassed myself on that. <laughs> Jeez, I better, <gasps> and I was out of my top. <laughs> Everybody, and I just thought, this is, Paul hey. is so classy. I, I wouldn't have heard it. Oh, yeah. Trust me, trust me, I took a look first. <laughs> That was the, wasn't that, was that the it. picture that was in your hat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Paul has but that Polaroid so nice to We never saw any of those pictures. Oh. We never saw anything. Everybody looked the other way. Nobody made any jokes about that. And that was, you know, from the top. That was a Paul Baxley class, class. Well, you know, class uh, act and taught everybody else to act like Paul, that. Paul, are you still showing those on Thursday night? <laughs> <laughs>